Hey guys, it's Ashley and welcome to the History of My Bookshelf Challenge. This fun challenge was created by Emma from Emma Books and I will leave the original video that she made down below in case you guys want to view the questions and check it out. Challenge videos were like super popular like eight months to a year ago and I did like a couple but I didn't do all of them so I decided why not do it now? <laughs> Basically there are just a bunch of questions about your bookshelves and you'll get to learn a little bit more about the history of where some of these books came from. I do want to point out real quick that I have unhauled a ton of books since the start of my channel so like some books that would have worked for these questions I don't have anymore so I'm just going to pick the best possible answer for every question. Okay without further ado let's get started. So the first task is to pick the oldest book on your shelf and for me this is gonna be a little hard because the oldest book on my shelf is currently in between both of those shelves by the wall, it fell. It fell like years ago and I never got it out and it's probably disgusting and super dusty and gross back there because I haven't been back there since I put the shelves together on an angle at the corner. So um, that's my original copy of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. It's down there. It's never coming back until I get new shelves. So. There's that! So the next couple of questions I'm already gonna start changing because they start at pick a book that you read in 2013 and honestly I don't think I have any of those on my shelves anymore. So I'm gonna move this question up and start at 2016 instead because that's when I started my channel. Because honestly, other than The Mortal Instruments and Percy Jackson, I don't think that I have any books that I read before 2016 on my shelves right now. Let's start with 2016. A book that I read in 2016 is really easy because I started my channel in 2016 and I remember reading The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater and The Raven Cycle as a whole in 2016. I, that's when I put up my book talks for them. It's just such a good series. I honestly need to reread it and I was going to reread it before the TV show came out, but now the TV show has been like kind of silent. So I don't know if that's happening anymore, but um, if we hear that it will be happening still, I'm going to reread this series at that point. So now a book that I read in 2017 is going to be a little harder because I feel like 2017 and 2018 kind of like merge a little bit in my brain. I'm really bad at keeping up with dates, like really bad at it. Also, I'm going to try not to pick the same book for all of these questions, but I'm also not going to look at the questions beforehand. So I'm really hoping that I'm not going to pick books that go for those questions and yeah, so a book that I read in 2017, I have to think. <laughs> Throne of Glass? Did I read this book in 2017? I think I started reading the series in 2017 and I might have gone into 2018 still reading it. So I'm just gonna say this and if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. A book that I read in 2018 is actually pretty easy because I remember talking about this book, The Last Magician, in 2018 so much and I specifically remember because that was when I had my shelves like this but there was a third shelf in the middle of them and I remember talking about this book when I had the shelves like that and that was in 2018. I'm 90% sure. There's a 10% chance that I'm wrong but I'm 90% sure. And then a book that I read in 2019 should not be too difficult. I picked Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I'm pretty sure I read this last year and I loved it. I lied, there's one more to this. A book that she read in 2020 because she goes all the way up until the year that she made this video, so I will too. A book that I read in 2020 this year would be The Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan because I actually just finished the series and my vlog will not be up on the channel by the time this video goes up, but it will go up relatively soon after this video, so. Keep an eye out for that. <laughs> so the next task was to pick a book that you read more than once, and for this I'm going with Illumine by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman because I actually read this once physically and then once on audiobook. So there we go. I could be giving you guys like a synopsis of these books, but honestly, things that I've picked out so far have been like, I don't know, pretty popular or I've talked about them already before, so not gonna do that. The next one is a book that you waited over 10 no. I almost said a book that you waited for over 10 years to be published. A book that you waited over a year to be published. I don't know. A book that I waited over a year? Can I say... Can I say Queen of Air and Darkness without having read this story? So that's what I'm gonna pick. I think that I waited over a year. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that this one took like a really long time to be published because it's so big. Ah, okay, the next one is a book that she read on vacation or away from home. And this one would have been a perfect moment to choose Illuminate because I read that one when I was on vacation one time. Oh my God, I seriously can't think of a book that I read when I was on vacation somewhere. What the hell? Can I say an ebook? Technically, ebooks that I own 
are technically part of my bookshelf as well. So I'm gonna give you an ebook. I'm gonna say I read a bunch of stories that I had read years before on Wattpad that had been since published. I read them again um, when I was in Europe, like uh, last year, I think. I don't remember what the names of them were, but I'll leave some like covers here for you. Um, technically, this is part of my ebook library, ebook bookshelf, so it works, okay? But I literally cannot think of any physical book that I own that I read on a vacation or away from home. So, here we go. Okay, the next one is pick a book that you got from someplace special. For this, it's not difficult. I don't think I've like ever touched these books from the top of my shelves before, but I actually bought a copy of Peter Pan and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland from the New York Public Library gift shop, I think, when I was in New York for the first time. A book that made you cry. This is not difficult. I cry a lot when I read books. For this one, I'm gonna go with Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys, which is a book that I read this year, I think in June, and it was so sad. It's a historical fiction. It made me cry my eyes out. Definitely this one. The next one is pick a book that you read in one sitting, which is also not difficult because I've done a lot of that recently. And for this, I'm gonna pick This Is My America by Kim Johnson. I literally read this in five hours. Like, I flew through it and it was wonderful. It was so good. Read this book, please. The next one is a book that you got as a gift from somebody. I'm gonna go with The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson because my brother got this for me for my birthday this year and it was a gift. Oh God, okay, the next one is a book that you read before you owned it. And this is gonna be hard because I don't know if I can think of any books that I've read either from like a library or somewhere else before I actually own. No, no, I can't think of one. Oh, oh. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Technically, I did own this one on audiobook, but I didn't own a physical copy, so I guess I'm kind of cheating here, but I listened to this one before I physically owned it, so we're going with this. The next one is one that I really don't know if I'm gonna have a answer for, and that is a book that you lent to somebody else. You're gonna have to give me a second to look on my shelves to double check this, because I don't think that I gave any of my books to anybody else and then they gave them back to me. Nobody really asks for books in my life. Like, I'm the only one who reads my books. I'm the only one who's interested in reading my books. So, got nobody to lend them out to. Yeah, the closest thing that I can think of is actually A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I lent this one to my mom, um, though we still live under the same house or the same roof. So, I don't know if it was so much lending as just like, I don't know. She read it. She didn't even read the whole thing. She took it to work with her and she read like the first chapter and she was like, Ashley, this is so boring. And I'm like, no, it gets better. And she was like, no, it's really boring. I have no interest in reading this. Don't you understand? And I'm like, mm. technically I lent it to her and she didn't like it. And I took it back. So I guess that works. Ooh, okay. Number 18 is a book that has been damaged. This would be a good time to pull out my... <laughs> first book on this list, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, which is, again, way back there, but um, can't do that because I can't grab the book. And also I already used it for the first question, so gotta find another one. To be completely honest with you, I don't think I have any books that are damaged. <laughs> Other than the Percy Jackson one that I talked about earlier, I'm pretty sure that all of my books are in pretty good condition, and all of the ones that had been damaged I unhauled just because I just didn't want the books anymore. Not because they were damaged, but more so because of what books that they were. Um, so the closest one that I can get is my copy of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, or my copy of, what is this book called? No, this isn't the right one. It's The Final Empire. No, it's, what the heck? Wait. I am, am I the only one who's extremely confused by the Mistborn series? Like, I don't understand. Why is this one called Mistborn, but then I'm pretty sure the first book is actually called The Final Empire? But nowhere on this book does it say The Final Empire. And then nowhere in my collection do I have The Final Empire. I have The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages. Where's The Final Empire? Is this it? And if so, why does it not say that on the cover? I am so confused. On this cover, this title page, it says The Final Empire. Mistborn, The Final Empire. Nowhere else on the freaking book does it say that. Is that the name of the series? Is the series called The Final Empire? No, it's the Mistborn trilogy, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, can you count a book as damaged if it came like this? Um, 
yeah it was just printed totally wrong so i haven't been able to read it like it literally like in the middle of the story it goes from like this to this and you just can't read it so um this is the closest that I can get to a damaged book. Next is to pick a book that you got on sale or a book that was discounted. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Graceling by Kristin Kashur, which I got on thrift books for like, I believe like three bucks, like it was really cheap. Um, and you can find really good books on thrift books if you're looking for like an inexpensive place to get books. I actually just got another order from thrift books because I'm trying to save money, so I'm going there to get my books. It's really good if you want like older books, like books that have been published years ago. They're just used books and they're great and I got this one for like three bucks. So the next task is to pick a book that you read with somebody else which Truly Devious would have been perfect for this question because I buddy read it with a friend in person but I already used that series for another book so instead I am going to pick a book that I'm currently in the middle of as of filming this video and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier? Maurier? I don't know how to say that. I'm reading this book with a couple of friends that I have a group chat with on booktube and so we just decided we all wanted to read some classics and the best way to motivate ourselves to do that was to read them together. So Rebecca is the book that we're reading in August and it's pretty good so far. I'm only like 60 pages in um, so I'm still like getting into the story and like figuring out what it's about and everything but I don't hate it for a classic so that's a good start. The next one is to pick a book that you associate with a song which this is really hard because I don't listen to music while I'm reading books or anything like that because the music distracts me from the reading. I really can't think of a single book for this question and it is driving me crazy. Like what the heck? Like I can't think of any adaptation, any like anything. I guess the closest that I can get to this question is the City of Bones movie with all of the like music in that. <laughs> like that really awkward moment in the greenhouse when like Clary and Jace have their first kiss and that big like Demi Lovato song just like starts playing. I don't know. I don't think of that song when I hear this book or when I see when I hear this book. I don't think of that song when I see this book but that's the closest that I can get. I am so sorry for bringing that memory back up. And next is pick a book that you associate with the food. What? Do you associate a book with food? I don't understand this question. What do I associate with food? Okay, I guess I'm gonna cheat now because we're nearing the end of the questions. I'm gonna cheat and pick a book that I already picked for another question and that's gonna be The Kane Chronicles again because um, I remember eating an entire large bag of veggie straws. I'm not lying. An entire bag of veggie straws when I read this book. I didn't even notice I was eating all of it. I just, you know, I started eating and then I kept reading and then I put my hand in the bag and I was like, they're gone. <sighs> I'm sure you guys can relate. I'm not gonna even be embarrassed by that. Somebody out there, multiple people out there are gonna relate, so. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, the next one is a book that you got years ago that you probably wouldn't buy now. The book that I picked for this question would probably have to be Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Not because, like, I don't like it, just because I spent way too much money on this particular copy of this book and have never read it and really don't have any interest in reading it. Also, I know that I picked a different copy of Alice in Wonderland for another question, and yes, I know that I said I have no interest in reading it, but somehow I have two copies of the story. Don't ask questions, just go with it. The next one is to pick a book that you associate with a specific time in your life. This one, this one is interesting. For this one, I'm gonna have to pick Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell for a different reason than you might think that I'm picking it. Basically, I don't associate reading this book with a specific part of my life. I associate hauling this book with a specific part of my life because this was one of the first books that I hauled in my very first book haul on my channel in 2016. For some reason, this book and Throne of Glass are the two that I remember the most vividly that stick out to me hauling in that video. Also, maybe Illuminae. Not 100%, but just throwing it out there. I had a bunch of books that I had seen on booktube constantly, and I bought them all, and they were in my very first haul. So I really associate this book and those books, but mostly this one because of the cover. For some reason, the color just, like, stands out to me when I rewatch those videos. I associate this book with the start of my channel. The next question is a book that you used to like, but you don't like anymore. And for this, I'm not going to pick a specific book. I'm actually going to lead you to a video. I just recently put up a video called popular books that I'm not a fan of or don't really like or whatever I titled it um, 
I put up that video and in that video I talk about five or six book series that I either didn't like when I read them or I used to like and don't like anymore. So I don't have those books on my shelves anymore, but if you want to know more about this question, go watch that video. I'll leave the link in the description. And the final question, the final task is to find the newest book on your bookshelf. And for this question, it's actually a tie between three books because I got them all in the same package most recently. And these are the books. Um, first up is Fire by Kristen Kishore, which I wanted because it's the sequel to Graceling, even though I don't think it follows the same characters, but something about it is similar. No, it's the prequel to Graceling. I don't really know, but I got it. And then the next book that I got was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, because Olivia from Stories for Coffee is obsessed with this story, and the most recent release has a beautiful cover that I really, really want, so I have to get through the first two or three books to get to that one. So that's why I got this story. Also, it's supposed to be really good. I hear really good things about it. And then I got Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys because I loved her first book and I decided to try her other one. This video took a lot longer to film than I thought it would because it was so much like having to think about things. If I had just pulled the books off ahead of time and then like talked about them, it would have been a lot shorter, but where's the fun in that? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I would like to know in the comments, what is the oldest book on your bookshelf? What is the book that you've had for the absolute longest time compared to every other book? Let me know. So guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. If you want to follow me on any of my other socials, all of my links and handles are in the description below. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Goodbye!